Danger Dolan. From 3D platformers with a twist to genre mashups of two unlikely choices, we count 15 amazing games that you've never heard of and you can play right now. Number 15. Grapple, a 3D puzzle platformer where you're an orb flying through space with the help of your stickiness as well as your grappling hooks, all in order to reach a black hole, which doesn't destroy you and instead takes you to the next level. The downside and possible upside of the game is that it's not going to let you fail. There are unlimited lives and numerous checkpoints to help you through to the end. Luckily, the challenge comes from the speedrun mode and all the secrets that you need to find, as well as the fact that there are some puzzles that will stump you for quite a while. Number 14. Zerahipt, an open world exploration game that is less of a game and more of a playable alternate reality, in which you take on the role of Pirazuka, an alien exploring sunny mountains, gloomy dark lands, vast deserts, and interstellar space using countless vehicles like trucks, tanks, aircraft, and military cruises. The developer of the game, Siasa, has been developing the lore of this world since he was a little kid and it's a project he's planning to spend his whole life working on. You can download this game for free, but don't expect any linear objectives and missions to complete. Just explore the world and discover things for yourself. He's constantly updating the game and he's always open to feedback. There's actually a link below this video that will show you the latest update and the current progress of the game. Number 13. Orbit. This game is casual fun. It's what most people like to play when they're listening to podcasts or something like that. The purpose of the game is to use the gravity of planets, moons, and other natural satellites to adjust the orbit of your comet without losing all of your mass. You can level up your comet by collecting stars, not the stellar kind, which you then use to increase the speed or durability of your comet. While this is a fun little game, doesn't have much replayability, but for the low price point, it's hard not to recommend this game to anyone looking for a bit of relaxing fun. Number 12. Bunny Must Die, Chelsea and the Seven Devils. Now moving on from the casual to the incredibly difficult, this game will probably frustrate you more than trying to put on underwear that's two sizes too small whilst underwater in the middle of a public pool. Well, maybe not that much, but it is a hard game. The genre is officially known as an action platformer, but is better known by fans as Metroidvania. If you're not familiar, it's a game where you navigate a large map, find power-ups, kill bad guys, and do some platforming. This game features time control, which is a fun mechanic, but it also features some iffy controls where you have to wait for an animation to end before beginning a new action. In a game with platforming, this might be a deal breaker for an otherwise Great game. Number 11. Parallax. This game is pretty similar to Antichamber, so if you like one, you'll most certainly like the other. The other game is similar to Portal, except instead of placing portals, you're trying to solve puzzles by swapping between 2D and 3D dimensions. Does it sound confusing? It is at first, but I'm pretty confident you'll get used to it pretty quickly. Despite the indie budget, the game feels very polished, with few bugs and great level design. The whole game is longer than Portal, but shorter than Portal 2. However, the mileage will vary greatly depending on your ability to solve the puzzles. Number 10. Frog Fractions. This game is free, it runs on a browser, and isn't what you think it is. So, if you've got a computer made within the last decade, chances are you can play this game. I don't want to spoil the best parts of the game, so I'm not going to tell you everything you need to know to be motivated to play it. However, if you're expecting a game that teaches you about fractions, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Well, that is unless you like learning about fractions, in which case you're probably disappointing to all your friends. All I'm going to tell you is that it is in fact possible to afford the Chinese New Year Dragon Warp Drive. From there, I'm sure you'll find your way. Just be wary that the game has no tutorials. Number 9. is Bara, Easily the hardest game on this list. This game takes two genres, platformers and bullet hells, takes the hardest aspects of each and puts them together in a seamless way whilst taking advantage of the precision gained from a mouse. Like all bullet hell games, you have to learn the patterns of your enemies to beat them, which isn't easy and, to some people, isn't fun. My favourite part of this game is the additional mechanics that make it work. First there's platform drawing which you'll need a mouse for and the time slowing which allows you to make up for your mistakes by giving you more time to dodge, create a barrier or draw a platform. Number 8. Divine Divinity. Another game that will probably run on your toaster. It's an old one, 
but a good and mostly forgotten one. The game is what happens when Dragon Age Origins, or more accurately, Baldur's Gate 2, gets real close to Diablo 2, like, super close. There's a lot of fun dialogue and the seemingly generic setting gets interesting eventually. On top of that, there's very few boring side quests. One of my favourites includes the Murder Mystery Quest. The combat is challenging to the point where you might feel like it's bullshit, but worry not, there's a reasonable solution to every scenario. For instance, your consumable items and seemingly useless spells will come in handy eventually. Number 7. Avoid the Destroyer In this game, you have the option to play dogfight or to control a fleet in an RTS fashion. You'll almost certainly need to dabble in both, but for the most part you can choose which one you like better and stick with it or just go with both, it's mostly up to you. The parts that will frustrate you are the gigantic difficulty spikes, the fact that the game forces you to replay levels to progress, and the frustrating fleet grouping mechanics. On the plus side, it's got fast developer support, full modability, a map editor, the ability to command pretty much anything you own, Newtonian style physics, as well as the creation of your own ships makes the game completely worth it. Number 6. Reassembly. This game does vector based graphics well, which isn't all that common to be honest. It also has procedurally generated levels, which again has positives and negatives. But where the game truly shines is the character creation, where you take parts and make a spaceship. Designing the spaceship takes a more realistic style, and that you don't just add parts with plus speed to get a faster ship. Instead, you balance your thrust and mass by choosing the right parts. The other great part of the game is the AI, which can and will brutalize you also impress you with how complex it is. Number 5. Grim Dawn, an early access game that is actually worth it before it comes out. That's crazy, huh? This game has solid combat, it feels like it has impact, with enemies ragdolling all over the place and animations that aren't ridiculously quick. It's another Diablo-like, so you're there to kill enemies to collect loot so you can kill more enemies to gain more loot. There's a few ways the developers spiced up things to make the game different from its obvious inspirations. For one, they have a similar health system to Minecraft, where your health regenerates very quickly out of combat by depleting a constitution bar, which you refill with food and potions. Number 4. Neon Excesses. This game was made by a whopping one person, albeit it is someone who used to work for Rockstar North, but that doesn't mean that this game isn't an impressive feat for any one man to make. The game is similar to Descent in that you're flying around in a spaceship in tight corridors. However, where it differs is that there's a cool progression system where enemies drop upgrades based on their own stats, instead of just having an XP system. There's seven and a half square kilometers procedurally generated areas of open world to explore each time you start a new game. So the game stays fresh with the sacrifice of deliberate level design, which admittedly is usually preferable. Number three, Grow Home, a 3D platformer where you help a giant alien grow up and off of the planet until he can reach his spaceship and go home. This is a game that you'll definitely want a controller for because of the analog movement which adds so much needed precision to move from platform to platform. At first it's mostly a 3D platformer with a gimmick, but as you progress the plant growing aspect becomes more and more important and powerful until you really feel like you created the land you're standing on. Number 2. Hand of Fate Yet another genre mashup is a bad way to describe Hand of Fate, because yes it combines several genres but it does it well. Take the joy you get from building a unique and powerful deck in a trading card game or a collectible card game like Hearthstone, add it to the fun of making decisions based on risk and reward and fill the rest with a hack and slash style combat. Notice I said fill, because despite how good the rest of the game is, the hack and slash elements feel mediocre. Not bad in any way, but it definitely isn't the best or most satisfying combat there is. Number 1. Black Hole An indie developed two dimensional platformer that has a deep story. It can't get much more vanilla than that, however, that doesn't mean the game isn't great and the story isn't interesting. Its difficulty is much in the same vein as Super Meat Boy, so it's hard to say the least. But it also feels fair, like every mistake you make is your own and not the cause of the developer's poor choices. This game was made in Game Maker, which makes it impressive that it feels so polished. However, using such a limited engine does give some drawbacks that become more apparent as you play. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!